Hello, hello, hello. What's up, guys? This is Terrence Blackwell, Blackwell Legacy Group. I want to thank you guys for checking out this um, lesson for today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a killer marketing strategy. So if you are thinking about how can I create a marketing strategy, um, if you've um, maybe put one together before or you're wondering, um, you know, what, in, what is an actual, actual marketing strategy? Today, we're going to answer those questions. So uh, this is what you're looking for. We're going to give you guys um, a bunch of information on how to actually identify and create an actual um, effective killer marketing strategy. So uh, make sure you stay to the end. This is going to be part one, guys. We're going to try to keep this under an hour, uh, this training under an hour. We're also going to do a part two, where we're going to uh, dive a little bit deeper into um, the whole schematic of what a marketing strategy will look like. So again, I appreciate you guys for being here. Again, I'm Terrence from Blackwell Legacy Group. I am a business um, development coach that works with small business owners who are in the process of growing their businesses. And we show them how to grow their business by $50,000 without spending more money on marketing and advertising. So we're super excited about that and super excited about the opportunity to help small business owners like yourself. Um, if you're watching this video, um, I am a, uh, like I said, a business coach. I am a brand new father. I'm a husband. Um, my beautiful wife just gave birth to our um, our beautiful daughter, Bella Moore. We're super excited. Um, so I did want to make sure that we put this training out to give you guys some access to um, how to create a killer marketing strategy. So before we go too deep, guys, let's get into it. You know, I appreciate you guys for being here today. I'm super excited about this opportunity to talk to you guys. So let's get into it and get into it. Now, if you are here, this means that you have looked at um, or, or taken advantage of our first class or course um, on how to create a target audience. So I'm not going to go too deep into how to create a target audience because we've already went over that. If you haven't already, if you're here and you haven't seen that one, make sure you go and look at that one first because that's going to give you a lot more context. We went really deep into how to create a target audience. So that's going to be really important. So I appreciate you guys. So one of the things, you know, when I was putting this lesson together, I wanted to make sure that, you know, we can create enough substance um, so that, you know, you can grow your business. And what I've seen a lot of times is, you know, when, when I when I create content, I create, I, ch I try to channel where I was, you know, when we first started our business. And, you know, I look back over those years and, you know, I remember even the reason why I started. And we started this business because there was a gap. There was a gap of, you know, people who needed information, you know, us, <laughs> we needed information in regards to how to really start an effective business. And at the time, we didn't really, we didn't feel like we had those resources. So we said, you know, let's learn as much as we can. Let's dive deep into, um, you know, the, the resources that small business owners are going to need and let's help other small business owners. So, you know, we're not preaching, you know, that we can show you how to make a million dollars because we've never made a million dollars, right? But what we're doing is we're showing, we're showing you um, what we can do. And these things, these are things that we've actually done. So we're not one of those coaches who's going to give you a lot of philosophy. These are actionable steps that you can use. So let's get into it, guys. So um, I, I, want, I want to paint a picture. I want to paint this picture because I think this is where a lot of you guys are right now. And I had this question that popped up. And, and the question is, so what does it take for a seed to become a tree? And I want you to comment. If you're, if you're watching this, you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to comment. What does it take for a seed to become a tree, right? So you, you may say, you know, it may take that tree to, to that, or that seed to ferment. Or, you know, it may, it may, you know, it may mean that that tree needs to be watered. Or it may need sunlight. You know, maybe the tree need, maybe the seed needs sunlight to become a tree. Um, maybe it needs to be in good soil, right? These are all great answers. That seed needs all of those things to become a tree, right? But the first thing that that seed needs to do, that seed needs to make a decision to become a tree. See, the, the issue is a lot of times when we're, we're thinking about growing our business, we're thinking about, you know, how, how can we get to this next level? And the issue that we have a lot of times is that we haven't committed to being on the next level because we're so stuck in 
you know, not having enough money coming into the business. We're so stuck on, um, you know, not knowing how to grow or not having the resources or not having the right mindset that we're, we don't even want to get rid of that to get to the next level with, within our business, right? So if you're there, if you're in that place right now, you're like, man, I want to know what do I need to do to get to the next level? The first thing that you got to do, you got to commit to the mindset that it takes to get to that level. You got to already know that you're already making $10,000 a month. In your mind, you got to know I'm making $10,000 a month because what happens now is now I make decisions based on someone who makes $10,000 a month, not someone who's trying to make a sale, right? If you're already making $10,000 a month, guess what? You don't seem as eager to make every single sale because guess what? You've already met your quota of making $10,000 a month. All of your bills are paid. All of your expenses are taken care of. You've already hit your goal. Anything, anything else is just extra, right? When you go into any sales conversation from that perspective, everything changes. You, you never have to worry about, or you never have to think about, man, I hope I close the sale because guess what? They smell it on you. They smell it on you that you need this sale to get to the next level, or you need this sale to pay your phone bill or pay your bill or pay your, your mortgage or whatever. So what I need you to do right now, I need you to make a decision that I am going to become a tree and I'm no longer a seed. If, if, you, if you agree with me on this, I want you to comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. Uh, I am a tree. Let's do it now. Say, I am a tree. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good, good, good. All right, so let's get into it, guys. So today, we, again, we're going to be talking about how to create a killer marketing strategy. And the first thing that goes into creating a killer marketing strategy is what? Is actually creating the market research and analysis. Before we can actually know how to, how to uh, kill a bear or, you know, kill an animal or kill whatever you're hunting for, you have to understand, all right, if, I, if I'm going to, you know, kill a bear or am I going to kill this animal, I have to go to the habitat of this animal. I have to be in the right environment of this animal to make sure that I'm successful. Because if not, what happens is you're now put into a position where you're, you're doing a lot of time. You're spending a lot of time, but you're not getting any results, right? Have, have, have anybody ever had that happen to them where they spend so much time within their business? And that spouse may maybe even looking at them saying like, man, like you're still doing that business, you're still doing that thing because you're putting so much effort into it and you are doing work. You're doing a lot of work. But the issue is the work that you're doing is not conducive to you growing. Is that, is that, does that make sense? So let me, let me give you guys a quick story. Um, everybody here, if you're human, you know who Starbucks is, right? Everyone knows Starbucks. Um, so Starbucks, you guys know, is one of the largest and most successful global um, global coffee houses or, or as a chain in existence, right? It's not even arguably, it is, right? So, but if, if you think about it, there's almost no argument that Starbucks is number one, right? It's not too many people who's going to argue you or, or argue with you and say that Starbucks is number two or somebody else has better coffee or, or better experience or whatever. It's not, it's not, that's not going to happen too often, right? But now I want to, I want you to question, because I want you guys to think about business from this perspective. The only way that you can you you can become a killer when it comes to creating your marketing strategy is you have to witness a killer, right? And Starbucks became a killer in understanding their marketing strategy, right? So you should observe what they did in that scenario, right? How they how they became the top dog, right? So Starbucks became the, the largest coffee house chain anyway, because they they value market research. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's bring it back. They became the largest largest coffee house chain because they value market research. I did not say they value the coffee beans. I did not say they value the the paninis or, or or the 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 um the the sandwiches. I did not say they have the best Wi-Fi. And none of those things was, was what I said, right? But what I did say is they value 
market research. All right. So what are they doing? They're tracking cultural trends. So they're, they're looking out for different trends in the markets, cultural trends, things that are happening around them so they can be aware of it. Right. They're monitoring social media. They're looking when people post, when they post their ads, because if you think about this, Starbucks is a brand. Because now what happens is you'll see someone who posts a picture and they're going to make sure that that Starbucks logo is in there. Right. They, when you see when you watch movies, you're being branded by this by the Starbucks logo. Right. The next thing that they do is they gather customer feedback. So they're always asking the customers, what can we do to be better? How can how can we be in a better position? How can we serve you better? How can this be? How can we increase this? Right. Because they want you to come back. And they understand that a customer values their opinion. So when you value your customer's opinion, that customer is going to say, man, I want to go back here because this person cares about me and what I have to say. Right. Here's the next thing. In-store product testing. So they may say, hey, look, we're going to do a one time thing, uh, or a one time blend. Right. This is the first. This is a, it's a new offer, a one time blend. We're going to see if this works. And we're going to test it on you. If it has good results, guess what? We're going to bring it back. But if not, no harm, no foul. Right? What is that? That's market research. Right? So, so my Starbucks uses this um, platform called um, the My Starbucks Idea. And this is where they get a lot of their market research. Because they want to get your, your feedback as a consumer so they can know how can we be better. Right? And this is how I want you guys to be thinking. What things can I implement within my business so that I'm always getting better? Always look at your process. How can my process be better? If, if it's difficult for clients to reach me, how can I make that better? Right? Now, I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, this was a few days ago. I'm on Facebook. And I do a lot of uh, Facebook marketing, Facebook outreach marketing. And um, I was speaking to a guy who I had um, had an appointment with and um, he had a product and I said, Hey, look, uh, I want to order. I want to order from you. Cause I, I like the, you know, patronage, you know, uh, different business owners that I know if they have a service or a product that I need, I'd rather really go with them. Right. It just, it supports their business. It builds that relationship. I, I, I enjoy doing it. Right. So I said, Hey, listen, I want to, um, you know, how much, and I'm going to tell you guys, it was a um, T-shirt brand, a graphic design business. And I said, you know, how much would it cost for me to get um, X amount of shirts designed with my logo on it over the sleeve or the size of my, my I'm sorry, the size of my pocket, right, on my, on my left, on the left side of my chest, right? It's very specific. The conversation that came back or the, the question that came back was, hey, you know, in order to give you better pricing or to get in order to give you pricing, I need a logo. I need to know what size I need to know this. I need to know that. I need to this and that. Right now. Guess what? That next day, I seen a commercial on TV. It was for a graphic design business. Right. And it said, go to my website, blah, 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 and create your custom order. So guess what I did? I went on the website. And went through the prompts in four clicks. I had my shirt design. Now, who would I rather go with? I would rather go with this person, but this person has never went through and and collected data to see if, if his process is broke or, or or if it needs if it needs work, right? Because if you would have ever went through his process, his consumers would have said, "No, nah, I don't like how you give pricing or you give quotes. It takes too long. There's too many questions, right?" Now, what he could have done is, oh, this is a better scenario. If I ask him, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in getting, you know, buying a couple of shirts. This is what I need. He said, OK, cool. Here's the link. Go through these prompts and, and, and fill out your order and I can help you throughout the process. Or, or let's talk over the phone. And I go through the prompts with you and, and, and then you I create an order for you and then you, you know, you make the purchase. Right. But see, th these are things that you can also always be thinking about. How can I make my, my service better? Right. So this is so this is what Starbucks does, which makes them so great. OK, so let's look at market segmentation. So market market segmentation 
is you want to identify your target markets and you want to also identify your, your customer segments, right? So if we're talking about Starbucks, they, they have, they've identified the target market is people, men and women who drink coffee. But what they're trying to do is they, they, they're, they're focusing, they're targeting more professionals who drink coffee, right? Now, they may say, all right, well, all right, so then, so that that's that's the the market, but then they can segment that. So it's not only coffee drinkers; it's coffee drinkers who are business professionals, who under within a certain age range, who also um, has like other hobbies or something. So there's so many different ways that they can segment it down. So you think about your business, and you think about you know, I, got, I know you guys have heard like you know niching down. This is when it this is what they mean when they say niching down, right? So you could say a coffee drinker. In America, who's over um, 20, 25 years old, who is from the South, right? Who makes over fifty thousand dollars? So think about that's five segmentations. Now I can narrow down who I'm actually talking to, who I can actually market to, right? That is market segmentation. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. All right. The next thing is going to be your your, your customer um, analysis, right? Your customer analysis is going, you want to analyze the customer's demographics. You want to analyze the behaviors and needs and preferences, right? So you get a person that buys, you want to, you want to now start to collect that data. Where is this person from? Right? What are some of their behaviors? So you, when we think about behavior, what is the behavior of a, of a consumer? So when, when people buy, is it a situation where they're in need right now, Right? So let's, let's say for an example, if, if you have like a debt consolidation business, guess what? These people are like really, they're really in need of your service right now and they can't wait, right? Now, let's say if it's somebody who's thinking about buying a home, is that is that is that person in need today? Typically, no. They can stay, typically understand that they're going to have to wait a couple months to buy a home, right? So that's understanding behaviors. So within that, all right, you got a person that's more angry, you got a person that's more chill, um, you know, laid back, whatever. So those are different type of examples of behaviors. And then you got needs and preferences, right? I'm going to add in one more. I'm going to add in competitor analysis as well. So your competitor analysis is going to be, I want to research and see what are some of the other businesses in my industry or business owners in my industry and what are they doing? Are they having success? Or what things are they doing that are not having success? And this is this is you know you you still keep integrity, but you can always look at your competitors and some and some businesses. I would even say call your competitors and call them and go through the prompts, right? Go through the prompts as if you want to buy that product or service and see how their process is. And you may be able to pick up a few things that you like, but you're also going to pick up a few things that you don't like. But guess what? Now when you're talking to a client. That you can tell, you can say, say to that client, well, listen, um, you know, I know that my product or service does this. And what I'm what I offer is way better than, than my competitors. You can even be, you can even be aggressive. Hey, look, these are some of the competitors in my market. And this is what they do. These are their pros and cons. I've already done the research for you, right? That's that's a competitor's analysis. Then you have a SWOT analysis. The SWOT analysis is. Assess the business's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? This is your business. What, what are some of your strengths, right? How long have you been in the industry? That could be a strength. A weakness can be if you haven't been in the industry long, if you don't have the experience, if you don't have the business experience, that could be um, a, a, a weakness. Opportunities, you know, do you have opportunities to partner with bigger companies, right? That's, that's an opportunity. Um, franchise, that's an opportunity. Threats. What are threats? Threats are COVID. We had a pandemic. A lot of businesses did not expect to have that as a threat, but it, that, it, that's a threat. The economy shutting down is a threat. If you're in a business that relies on a, a strong economy, then you want to understand that, you know, man, I'm in, I'm in a situation where this can't be a threat. So now what you do is you create barriers. If that does happen, you create thresholds. If the, if the economy looks like it's about to crash, so this, if this happens, this is what I'm going to revert to to make sure that I stay in business, right? You always wanna have that plan defined so you never get in that position where you're like, oh crap, how do I stay in business? Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are still listening. This is good stuff. Good, good, good. All right, so 
so so we've talked about um uh, we've talked about the um actual um we, we've talked we've talked about you know uh, we killed we created the killer market marketing strategy um now we've done the marketing research and the analysis and now we're looking at um marketing objectives okay so I always look at this whole subjective and I, I get I get slack from this sometimes because I, I don't necessarily believe in goals anymore. And I'm going to tell you why. So a goal is defined as the intention of an activity of a plan. A goal is the intention of an activity of a plan. Now, the issue is the downside of a goal is that it usually doesn't come with real ramifications. Right. So what does that mean, Terrence? What that means is a lot of times we'll set goals. We'll say, how many, how many times have you said, man, I want to make a million dollars. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. I want, I want to make ten thousand dollars in a day. How many of you say, raise your hand if you've ever said anything like that? Here's the thing: you believe that goal in that moment. Is that is that true? Would you would you agree? You you believe that goal within that moment, but the issue is. You never committed to the, the work that goes into achieving that goal. You didn't commit to the, the work, you committed to a goal. Does that make, you see the difference? Now, what happens is you, you, you say these things, you start to tell your, you, you tell your spouse that you're gonna take them on a trip, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna give to this charity, you're gonna you know, take your kids to Disney World, you're gonna, you, you start committing to doing certain goals, but you never commit to the activity. Right now, what happens? What's the psychology? What's this, the psychological factors that happens when you set goals and you don't hit the goals? When when you set these goals or you say these things out loud, you as a person start to not believe yourself anymore. Mm, okay, you as a person stop believing in yourself. So you now. Don't even believe the stuff that you're saying to yourself. Does that make sense? So now, because what happened, and here's the thing, that what happens when you set these goals, you really do have the intention of hitting the goal, right? But then things happen. You get an unexpected bill. Your mood changes. Life happens. Life hits you. And the result is you don't hit the goal, but you didn't intend to not hit the goal, but things happen. So what I want you to do is I want you to create some, I, I coined this, this term and it's called a success pivot. So I want you to create a mindset of creating a success pivot. And these are small actionable steps that you can do no matter what, right? These are small actionable steps that you can do no matter what. So instead of hitting a goal of, I'm going to make $10,000 this month, how about this? I am going to make five calls to prospects for 31 days, and I'm going to see what happens. Now, let me, let's break this down. Let's break this down really quick. Then we're going to move on to into some objectives. I know you're probably saying, dang, this training is definitely going to be three hours. It's not, I promise. So you create a goal, I'm gonna make 10,000. Then you say, I'm gonna, you know, I wanna make 10,000. All right, so that, that's, that's how I want it, because that's a goal. My success pivot is, I'm gonna make five calls every single day, and I'm gonna see what happens. No matter what, for 31 days, 30 days, right? But now what happens is day one, you may say, you know what? I call five people, uh, two people answer, I close one. Right. By day 10, you may say, man, I'm, I'm killing it. Let me call 10 people. Right. Because now if I call 10 people, I should be able to close two a day. Right. So now if I'm consistently calling five people a day and I'm consistently closing one person a day, guess what? I'm making money every single day. And based on, you know, your, your product market fit, your pricing, you should be able to hit whatever goal that you set. But now what you've done, you've created a habit, a work habit, a success pivot of I can call, I'm going to call five people a day, no matter what happens. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care if it's sleeting. I don't care if it's snowing outside. I don't care if, 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 
it's a cookout, it's a family cookout, a birthday, whatever. I'm going to do this one thing every single day. Does that make sense? All right. So uh, I know you guys have heard of the acronym SMART. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, right? So I'm not going to go too deep into that. And so I, even though I love the acronym of SMART, I, I love this even better when we create the success pivots because you can control every aspect of it, right? So now, so let me take this a step further. Now, once we create this success pivot, I also want you to create um, data behind it, right? So like KPIs, key performance indicators. So every day you, you track, all right, day one, I call five people, got one person, right? Now you write this down, literally write it down, make this a part of your daily routine, and write it down and watch what happens. Within 30 days, you would change and your business would change, okay? Is that cool, guys? All right, so I'm not gonna kill that. I'm not gonna kill objectives too much. All I want you guys to remember for objectives is do success pivots and you'll be successful. I, I'm, I'm not even gonna go too much more deep into that, right? Now, the next thing is I want to I want you to think about positioning and different, different differentiation, sorry. Definitely messed that up. I didn't. I never said I was an English scholar. So, all right. <laughs> so, what I want you to look at, guys, is going to be your, your unique value proposition. So, let me give you guys a quick story. Um, and you know, and hopefully this, this um, resonates to you. So, I remember I was talking to my mentor one time, and you know, he, he was uh, he was talking to me about a, uh, another small business owner wanted to start a business and, they, and one of the issues they were having was um they felt like there was a lot of people in the industry right and um he gave he, he told me that he gave them the story and i thought it was so amazing because at this point i had never heard it and i thought it was so profound right and he just talked about the bread aisle we all have heard about the bread aisle uh, we, we walk down a bread aisle. There's just so many different variations of bread, right? You got wheat, you got honey wheat, you got uh, 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 all different w white grain, all these different types of breads, right? The hard bread and all that stuff, right? You have all these different types of bread. But guess what? It's a reason why those the, all those different types are there. Because that bread, those, those types of bread are for somebody. They know their audience, right? And with that type of bread is done, they've created something where they stand out in a crowd. And that's what I want you guys to think about. How am I, as a business owner, going to stand out in a crowd to be able to reach the person that's, that's looking for me, right? Now, what this is called is your unique value proposition. Now, think about your unique value proposition from the perspective of all right, how can I be different? Now, this, this doesn't mean that you have to do something astronomical, right? You just have to, you have to be very specific. You have to offer something that no one else in your audience is, um, is offering, right? Sorry, I'm going too far. The no one else in your audience is, is, is offering. Is that cool? Now, what happens is when, when, when you're offering, when you're unique and what you're doing, when, when you do your marketing, you're talking specifically to a certain person, right? So let me give you an example of a unique selling proposition or unique value proposition. A unique va value proposition could be, um, let's say, uh, let's say if you guys heard of the shoes, Tom's, I'm going to use that as an example. Their unique value proposition is when you buy a pair of shoes, and I don't think they, I don't know if they do it anymore, but um, when you buy a pair of shoes from Tom's, guess what? They donate a pair of shoes to someone in need. Is how amazing is that, right? Now, because they know that people love to give back. People love like being connected, and they know that if they're able to um, get from help a client from an emotional standpoint, they're going to get more people to buy, right? So that's what I want you to think about. It doesn't have to be that same situation. I want you to be thinking about it at all times. How can I set myself apart from others in my industry? If, if, if I line up 10 people in your industry, are you all going to be saying the same thing or are you guys going to be different? And that's what I want you to think about. All right. So um, 
And this is this is all about your position. This is how you position yourself above anyone else in, in your in your business, right? And this goes into key uh, differentiators as well. Is what things set you apart. So you have to understand that your analysis of your competitors, competitors, so you can know what's going to make me different. Does that make sense? All right, all right. So let, now let's get into um, the marketing tactics um, and also channels. So what's important here is you want to determine how will you market, and then what will work best for your audience. Right. Um, it's important to understand like what your audience is. Right. You, you never want to be thinking about I'm just going to do stuff. I'm going to I'm going to put stuff out because people say I need to market. Right? People say I need to post on social media. No, that's the horrible way to do it. Right. When you're marketing, you need to have an idea and a tactic. OK, if I post three times a day, I should get um, 10, 10, 10, new, 10 new clients or 10 new leads from that. 10 new leads. I should close two new clients. Right. And that can be your formula for getting clients. And that's 100% okay. If you do that on a consistent basis, you, 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 have, a, you have a great business, right? Because you can always turn up how many times, how many times you post, how many people you convert. All those things are now variables within your business. Does that make sense? All right. Now, um, it's important that when, you, when you're creating content, you're looking at where is my audience and not just doing things just to do things right because you don't want to chase trends if you start to chase trends um you lose yourself because you, you're not like you know you're not running from a, a strategy standpoint and i'm gonna give you guys an example this week uh, or this week this week or last week uh i think it was instagram to introduce something called trends right so trends is a direct competitor to twitter all right everyone knows you know twitter's you know a social media giant and they introduced this as a way to capitalize on some of the market share and that type of marketing form, right? So if you think about, you know, Instagram started off as like, you know, pictures, um, and then TikTok came along and YouTube shorts came along and they said, no, we're gonna do short, short form videos as well, right? And, 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 and they did that to compete with those companies because they want the market share, right? Then they said, well, listen, let's let's compete with Twitter. When they, when they wanted to compete with Twitter, they put out this, you know, we have threads. So what I, what I realized is, man, um, I, I got a question, is my audience on threads, right? I got a, I got a question, is, is my people there? Am I going there because my people are there or am I going there because it's a trend, right? Because I know that my audience is more mature business owners that don't love a bunch of marketing mediums, right? Whatever they have is what they're gonna keep, typically, right? So I'm not going to threads looking for a new client because my 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 audience don't think like that where they jump on trends, right? All right, so when you look at your uh, marketing tactics, you wanna be specific, right? You wanna be very specific. You want to know, all right, what exactly am I going to do? What is my bread and butter when it comes to creating, um, uh, uh, generating marketing buzz or getting getting client feedback or, or getting client client client's attention? Okay, excuse me. Then you want to look at a digital marketing, right? So you want to outline strategies for your website. So you have your website. You know, do you have a pop up on your website? Do you have videos on your website to convert better, right? If I go to your website, is it is it focus on you or is it focus on helping the client right and, and 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 the way that you know is because you have an about page but you don't have a page to collect their information that's how i know it's about you and not about the client right so so those are things you want to look at you want to look at all right what is my strategy from a website is, do i have a website just because people say you need a website or am i driving traffic to my website or, or, you know, and, and am I am I looking at the data from my website? Because if you're not looking at the analytics of how many people go to your website and what pages they go to on your website or how many people click off, then then you you just have a website because people say you should have a website. The next thing is the SEO, search engine optimization. So when you create your websites on each page of your website, you need to create something called um, um, metadata, right? This is you, know, you create a title for the page, you create an image 
you create your meta description and you, and you add in keywords so that when people are looking for a certain thing, they can find you in your website. This is very important. This is alone is this is alone is a marketing tactic, right? Content marketing. Content marketing is um, I create content based on the needs of my clients. So what are my clients looking for? What are the questions that my clients have? Right. If I'm a real estate agent, you know, is, is it is this a good time to buy? Right. What things do I need in order to buy? Right. This, this is content marketing. Social you have social media. Again, social media should be dictated by where's my audience. If you're going to where you're comfortable, then you already you've already lost. Where is my audience? Is, is my audience on Facebook? Is it an older crowd? Is my audience on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? I mean, uh, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, right? You want to know where your audience is so you can go to where your audience is opposed to just doing something. Then you have um, email marketing. Email marketing is something that if you have a business, you need to have email marketing going. Now, I'm not going to say how many times you should email. You can email once. You can email twice a week, you know, twice a, twice a month, whatever. But you should email on a consistent basis to your audience, right? Now, what you can do even within your emailing, you should segment your audience. So you have some people that you've, you've gotten their information from, a lead generator. You have some people who, who, who bought a product. Guess what? I want to put those people in different categories. If I have somebody who's bought already, guess what? They're more prone to buy from me again, opposed to someone who, who is interested in a freebie that I gave. Because now I know that this person is someone who is interested potentially in my product down the road, but they're not ready to buy yet. It means I got to do a little bit more nurturing and a, and a little bit more um, massaging to get them to buy. Does that make sense? Then you have online advertising. Online advertising, everybody's heard, run ads, run ads, Facebook, um, Google, Twitter. Uh, um, you can do, you know, promote on different different things, all this different stuff, right? Which is cool. It's great to market. If you want to market uh, or do online advertising, I think it's great. But if you don't, if you haven't mastered these things yet, then you should not be, um, you should not be advertising online. Because you you don't even know what you're doing yet. You haven't mastered your messaging. You haven't mastered where's your where's your clientele. What are you what are your competitors doing, right? It, you're too soon. And I always give this this analogy of you know if you um, ads are adding fuel to the fire, right? But if you don't have a fire, guess what? You don't want to add fuel on the ground, right? It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to benefit you, right? So online advertising is a great resource if you're ready to, if, if you already have a buzz and you're ready to really exponentially grow your business, okay? And the last one is going to be events and sponsorships. So events and sponsorships, um, you want to determine like your involvement and like, you know, if it's like trade shows, um, different conferences, and that conferences are a great place to meet clients and also peers that's in business as well. Um, you can do community events. You can, and even here's a big one. If you're like, man, I don't know a lot of people or, you know, I don't know which events to go to. Guess what? If you really want to like expedite the process, guess what? Throw your own event. If I'm a real estate agent, guess what? I'm going to I'm going to uh, throw a real I'm going to throw an event. I'm going to invite. Uh, guess what? I'm going to invite um, loan brokers or, or mortgage brokers. I'm, I'm going to invite credit repair people. I'm going to invite people who um, uh, cut grass. People who build decks, who build fences. I'm inviting all these people because guess what? These are all resources I need to be able to sell my product, which are houses. Does that make sense? So I want you guys to be thinking like this when it comes to your marketing strategy. And this is how you kill, you create a killer marketing strategy because you're thinking outside of the box, right? Now, everything that we talked about today, what I want you to do is go back and watch this, right? And I want you to actually write down um, everything, every, every bullet point that we talked about, I want you to write that down because now you're going to actually have that, that piece of information where you can say, okay, well, now I have an actual marketing strategy that I can use to actually grow my business. Does that make sense, guys? So hopefully this was good information. This is only uh, part one. So I hope, hope you guys get an opportunity to um, take advantage of this, listen to it, um, implement it.
right? And once you've implemented this part, then we're gonna go to part two, where you're gonna be able to um, actually, you know, act, actually put it to effect and you can start to track and see what's actually happening within your marketing, okay? So hopefully this was good information for you guys. Again, my name is Terrence Blackwell of Blackwell Legacy Group. I appreciate you guys for checking out this, um, uh, checking out this training. If you have any questions, make sure you go to um, terrenceblackwell.com. That's T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E, blackwell.com. You can schedule a free 30-minute con um, consultation with me. Uh, if you have any questions, we also do a free training on um, the website as well. So you can go there to actually get some valuable information. Um, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. So again, this is Terrence, and we will talk soon. Bye.